So we've all seen the Battle of Geonosis at the end of Attack of the Clones. And while that is an awesome battle, there is one ship that's notably absent, the Venator-class Star Destroyer. So today we're going to try to figure out why there were no Venators at the Battle of Geonosis. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, head down below and hit that subscribe button. So the Battle of Geonosis is the first battle of the Clone Wars, and arguably one of the most important engagements of the entire conflict. The Grand Army of the Republic made its grand debut and revealed itself to the galaxy. It saw the beginning of open hostilities between the Confederacy of Independent Systems and the Galactic Republic, and the first major engagement between clone troopers and battle droids. It also notably saw the first deployment of the Republic Navy. This deployment was in the form of a fleet of 12 Acclimator-class assault ships. Now, the Acclimator is a well-rounded ship capable of landing troops on the surface of a planet as well as taking place in small ship-to-ship -ship engagements, but it's not nearly as capable as the Venator-class Star Destroyer. Now, as we see in the Clone Wars series and Revenge of the Sith, the Venator was the mainstay ship of the Republic Navy. It's a great carrier and fairly decent at ship-to-ship -ship combat. So why wasn't it at the first engagement the Republic Navy was involved in? Let's start with the obvious possibility. It's entirely possible that the first Venators simply weren't ready for combat. The Venator seems to be in a lot of ways a more complex vessel than an Acclimator-class assault ship, so it would make sense that maybe the crews of these vessels weren't really ready for combat yet when the war broke out. But we do see Venators deployed at the Battle of Christophsis only a few weeks later, which is canonically the earliest deployment of Venators that we see. So I'm gonna guess that few week difference really isn't the Venators not being done in time, since they were deployed in a significant number just a few weeks later. So why weren't there Venators at this battle? Well, I think we need to look at the tactics and objectives of the Republic. Now, the Republic's goal was basically to nip the Separatist problem in the butt before it became a full-blown war, something that they really didn't achieve. Their main goal was to knock out the Separatist leadership and basically end the war right there. However, they chose to do this via a large-scale ground assault, and while that does look pretty good on screen, it doesn't make much sense tactically. But let's assume they have a good tactical reason for carrying out the strike that way instead of doing something like an orbital bombardment. So your goal then is to carry out a large ground assault against a series of fortified positions. On top of that, we know that the Separatists didn't have a navy in orbit of Geonosis. All of the Separatist ships were landed on the planet, so there would be no opposition in space. On top of that, it kind of seems like the Confederacy of Independent Systems didn't have any starfighters on planet at the time. The only things we see in the air for the Confederacy are Nantex-class regional starfighters, more commonly known as the Geonosian starfighter. And these seem to have been deployed in relatively small numbers. So when it came to engagements in the air and in space, it seems like there really wasn't much of a fight. Now, considering that their goal is to land a large number of troops and they're not expecting a fight in orbit or in atmosphere, it makes more sense why they would just bring acclimators. The acclimators are capable of engaging ships in space if they run into something they didn't expect, and they could conceivably deploy some small starfighters although they couldn't carry anywhere near as many starfighters as a Venator. If the main goal was to carry out a ground assault, and they were 100% certain that they weren't going to run into any unforeseen air or space resistance, the choice of using just acclimators kind of makes sense. The acclimator is an amazing troop ship. It can land in a combat zone and release thousands of clone troopers, along with a good number of ATTEs and other assault equipment. So with the assumption that the Republic had really good intel on what the Separatists had on Geonosis, and with the assumption that the Republic for some reason deemed an orbital bombardment infeasible, the use of Venators makes perfect sense. After all, these ships really only need to land troops. Without Separatist capital ships being present in orbit, it's really not necessary to be capable of doing much else. Now, there's arguments for the effectiveness of a blockade around Geonosis to prevent the Separatists from escaping, but that's a whole nother question. And maybe they were there and we just didn't see them. I guess it's entirely possible that the Republic could have left some Venators in orbit to sort of hold the system down while the Acclimators carried out the main assault. Why these Venators didn't intercept the escaping core ships is beyond me, but I guess it's a possibility. But nonetheless, that battle began the Clone Wars, one of the most devastating wars in the history of the Star Wars galaxy. And if you want to know more about the Clone Wars, I actually have a whole playlist of videos I've made on the war. I'll leave a link up here if you want to go check that out. And I want you to tell me down below why you think there were no Venators at the battle. Would you have brought Venators if you had the choice, or do you think going with just Acclimators is the right decision? And if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.